I started this project almost a year ago, but halfway through it I decided to rebuild my fort and managed to get so sidetracked by other projects that I forgot about it completely. This is my first attempt at making anything larger than a dagger, so I'm expecting it to come out a little wonky as I find and fix all of the problems that arise from big works that are not present in smaller ones. The first and longest part is to draw out and flatten the bar. I began this at one end and then continued at the other, partly because my anvil was a little too close to the wall to allow me to make the whole thing from one end, but also because if the section of bar beyond the heated point is too long, the bar tries to bend at the point you are trying to work. The steel I'm using is rebar, which is not a great steel. It is a very not great steel. But unlike many people, I have no fixation with making everything fully functional. I have exactly zero intentions of ever having to stab someone with this, so as long as it looks right, that's good enough for me. I enjoy the process of smithing. The end results are less interesting. In order to minimise the amount of grinding this will need, the billet is forged to a slightly more uniform width and thickness before bevelling the edges. Blade roughly forged to shape, I started work on the cross guard, which would be made out of one small straight bar, two larger curved bars, and one large circular mounting. These will be made individually and then welded together when they are finished. After flattening out the cylinder, it was ground smooth and then painted using a permanent mark. There are much better inks to use for this, but my voice is richer than I am, so I use permanent mark. The purpose of the ink is to give you a nice clean layer that you can easily mark with a scribe, allowing you to draw accurately on the steel. The design was then ground into the steel using a small hand grinder. After grinding the design into the steel, it was tidied up using a homemade chisel. The bars for the cross guard, which I found lying in the mud, were smoothed, had their edges rounded over, and were generally clean.
stray bar was then cut in half as it needed to be attached to both sides of the mount. Incidentally, the circular part was cut in half sideways, had a slot ground into it and was then welded back together. I did not feel like trying to forge a hole through a bar that wide, so I took a simple route. Once everything was stuck together, a power file was then used to clean up all of the welds. This block of oak is going to be used for the handle. I used a plane to bring it down to the right shape and thickness. was then cut in half while deeply regretting not having a bandsaw. Each block then has half the thickness of the tang cut into it using a router and is then cleaned up by hand using some chisels. Once everything fit nicely, it was then glued back together. They were placed together over the sword tang to ensure that they remained lined up before clamping them together and removing the blade. Once the glue was dry, the block was plain until the faces were smooth and the corners were square. Four smaller pieces of wood were then cut, cleaned and glued together. Once the handle fit snugly, the corners were sawn off turning it into a hexagon and the edges were removed using a chisel. Two of these were made and both of them were then glued onto the handle.
I then started marking and cutting up the leather that would eventually be wrapped around it. You do not in fact need a two foot long ruler to mark leather, but all three of my smaller rulers have a habit of disappearing when I'm looking for them. Some advice for anyone who's as bad at sewing as I am, superglue is far better at making knots than you are. After the initial dry, it was then polished using 240 grit sandpaper on a dish grinder and was then further polished using 400 grit sandpaper. Unfortunately, I forgot to film myself cutting the thin, shallow channel down the centre of the blade. That is what is currently being filled with shell, which is a kind of resin that is very black and melts at around 80 degrees Celsius. Filling the gap, the excess was then sanded away. Any large smooth sections that escaped the sander were then cleaned off with a knife before smaller sections were cleaned by using nail polish remover.
And there we have it. I hope you've enjoyed watching this half as much as I enjoyed making it, and I hope to see you again.